Hello, lovely ladies. You know, I was sad to hear that the single mom's retreat was canceled. And I just thought I would share um, a little bit for you about my own experience in the hopes to encourage you on your journey. You know, I called this uh, segment, the tale of two households, the struggle is real. You know, if you've gone through a divorce or are going through a divorce, you can probably relate. I remember one of the stressors for me was um, having the two households. And uh, my house seemed to be the one with the rules and this is what we're going to do and we're going to go to church and here's what we're doing. And um, the other household, and this isn't a bad mouth, it was, it was just very different. And so along the way, there's a dichotomy. And sometimes as the kids are growing, um, one of the things that happened, fear came in for me. You know, as my son started to become a teenager, I would hear sometimes, well, if I can't do that, I'm going to go to dad's. And I started to feel that fear or anxiety of, oh, I don't, I don't want my child to, to um, want to do that or not to be in my house. So maybe I should relax my rules or not do what I really feel in my heart. But I knew that wasn't really um, something to do either because what does the Bible tell us? It tells us train a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not um, depart from it. So I had great advice from a counselor who said, Nikki, you need to set those boundaries and, and not be afraid of that. Oftentimes it's just um, threats. You know, the kids are gonna push our buttons when they're going through those years of independence. Hold your ground, lovingly um, enforce those boundaries. And that was some of the best advice I ever received. So I wanna just share a few of those tips that will hopefully um, help you on this journey. It's, it's not easy, but you can get through it and come out on the other side. Um, it's been over 10 years since a, I went through a very traumatic divorce. Uh, my former spouse had been unfaithful. And it was a time where I really questioned, well, will I ever be happy again? And I'm here to say, um, hold your ground, do the right thing, get close to the Lord and pray, and you will come through this and out on the other side. So my tips for getting through this dichotomy with the two households is number one, be gentle on yourself. You know, it can be hard to go through these things. Be gentle on you and on this um, journey. You know, sometimes it's going to be great and other times, you know, not so great. Um, remember, you can only control yourself and your household. I think this was one of the, uh, another challenge for me. I would think that I could talk to my former spouse. And I think if you have that relationship where you can, that is fabulous. And that's what we want to all strive for. But sometimes like it was out of my control. That just wasn't going to happen in the situation. So with that, I had to realize, you know what, no amount of me saying, you know what, could I just talk? And I always thought like I could just reason or share why um, maybe uh, this person could consider this at their house or here's how the children are feeling. And I would always try to um, put that on the other person. Finally, this is really helpful for the counselor too. They just said, Nikki, you know what, um, you can only control your side of the street. And if you've if you need a good resource, Dr. Cloud and Townsend have the book on boundaries. Fabulous, fabulous resource. And it's true. I can only can control myself and what goes on in my household. And sometimes that is very hard to let go of control. But as long as the children are not in harm's way or not being abused, you really don't get to say what goes on in their house when they're over with the other spouse. So letting go of that control and controlling what you can. Yourself and your household will go a long way. Um, lovingly enforce those boundaries. It can be really easy to want to be lax or uh, let the kids get away with things that you know aren't good or to um, not enforce the rules. But you know what? They need that stability. They need the rules enforced. And even if they might threaten um, or say things, you know what? Ultimately, they will see that those boundaries are good. And so I just want to encourage you um, to do that and to hold your ground in a loving way because kids do need boundaries. And that really brings me to my next point of choosing faith over fear. You know, fear can come in with all the reasons why you shouldn't do this or you should just let the kids do this or that or things that you wouldn't normally agree with because, well, they're going to get to do it at another house. And so maybe they won't want to come to my house. Nope. Hold your ground. They are, they are going to admire that someday and they will come back even if they don't appreciate it now. So choose that faith over fear. Fear really is false evidence appearing real. Um, the next thing, pray. I can't stress this enough. Uh, the power of prayer before your kids go over to the other household, the power of prayer for um, them, for you, for your former spouse, this will be huge. Um, prayer changes things and we know that. So pray. And then finally, 
make sure to speak good things over your former spouse. You know what? The children are looking to you. They, in fact, are part of this other spouse. So if you badmouth the other spouse, it makes them feel really bad about themselves. Remember that. I know it's hard. It can be challenging when things are, are not... Uh, you know, feeling good or going the way you, you want it to go and you're really trying hard, but refrain from that need. And you know what? We're human. If you fall off the horse and you make a mistake, just repent and get back on and, and try your best to walk in these things. So just in closing, I want to remind you, be gentle on you. Remember, you can only control your side of the street. Um, lovingly enforce your boundaries. Choose faith over fear. Pray and speak good things, blessings, and um, prayers. Don't badmouth your former spouse. You know, these things will go a long way. It is not an easy journey, but you are going to get stronger in this process. And you know what? God can really work on our heart and work on um, just creating us into that person he wants us to be. And I'm always reminded on this. I want to leave on um, a note, as I mentioned before, train a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not turn from it. So let that be your guiding light um, through all of this, that your children will um, be happy that your house was a place of safety and boundaries and that you lovingly enforce those things you believe in. It's not easy to have two households and the struggle can be real, but you can come out on the other side and everyone can be happier.